one. I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Our freshwater ecosystems are some of the most important and diverse ecosystems in the world. But in recent years, most of the aquatic animals in these ecosystems are now struggling, as it's thought that almost a third of all freshwater fish are actually threatened or endangered. Most of the reasons behind this are human related. All life on Earth depends on water, so if the health of our freshwater ecosystems decline, it really doesn't look good for the future of our planet. Because of this, there are many conservation efforts to try and save our freshwater species, and hopefully the world's rivers and lakes will be healthier in the future. In today's video, I will be focusing on the freshwaters of the USA, as I will be going through five threatened and endangered freshwater species that can be found in the USA. And for our first species, we'll be heading off to the Gulf of Mexico, as we have the Gulf Sturgeon. This large prehistoric fish can be found in both saltwater and freshwater, and is most commonly sighted in rivers that drain into the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf Sturgeon is actually a subspecies of the Atlantic Sturgeon, and just like all sturgeon species around the world, they have been on this planet for millions of years. Throughout this long time that they've existed on the planet, they've had to deal with a lot of threats, as there's been multiple changes in climate and planet-altering events. Even though they've been able to live through these, some sturgeon species could be wiped out in the next few decades, as sturgeon are more critically endangered than any other group of species. The sturgeon reaches a maximum size of around 2.4 meters or 8 feet long, and although this is a very respectable size, it's nowhere near the largest sturgeon in the world. Gulf sturgeon hatch in freshwater rivers before eventually heading out to sea. These fish eventually return to spawn in the summer. While they're in their freshwater habitats, they barely feed, but they do often jump out of the water, and this is thought to be a form of communication to maintain group cohesion. Because of their impressive size and their armor plating, they have very few natural predators, but one of these predators is of course humans. Today, the Gulf sturgeon is listed as vulnerable to extinction. One large reason behind this is overfishing, because just like all sturgeon around the world, the Gulf sturgeon is harvested for its caviar, as this caviar demands a high price, and many sturgeon are illegally poached. The construction of dams is also known to have an impact on the Gulf sturgeons, as they block their passage to historical spawning habitats. This has an impact on how many sturgeon breed each year, leading to a decline in their numbers. Dredging is also known to have a significant impact on their numbers, as this process gets rid of a lot of creatures living in the substrate, which the Gulf sturgeon feed on. Today, there are many conservation efforts to help the Gulf sturgeon, both by preserving their existing habitat and by monitoring bycatch and stock recovery. And hopefully in the future, we'll get to see more giant sturgeons launching themselves out of the water. But for our next species, we'll be heading to the eastern United States, as we have the Candy Data. The Candy Data is only found in the Kanawha River system in the states of Virginia and West Virginia. In this river system, they're normally found in clear, fast-moving sections of small to medium-sized rivers. They prefer rocky, gravelly areas where they wait in the current, feeding on aquatic insect larvae and water mites. And on this diet, they can reach a maximum size of around 10 centimeters or 3.9 inches. The candy darters play a very important role in the ecosystem, not only by feeding on insect larvae, but also providing food for larger predators, as they're often predated on by larger trout species, so a decrease in their numbers can have negative effects on the whole food chain. Today, the candy darter is listed as near threatened on the IUCN's list of endangered species. Most of the reasons behind this decline are again human related. Their love for gravel substrates also plays a key role, as an increase in stream sedimentation means that it's harder for this species to feed and also breed, as they lay their eggs in the gravel substrate, which is being buried in some areas. Because this is such a beautiful and loved native fish, there are many conservation efforts, and the candy data is now protected, and there are safeguards on large areas of their natural habitat so that they can be sustained, and hopefully their numbers will soon bounce back. Before our next species, we'll be heading down to Florida, as we have the Florida manatee. This large aquatic mammal is actually a subspecies of the West Indian manatee. They're normally found in peaceful, slow-moving freshwater habitats, feeding on seagrasses and aquatic plants. This feeding habit gave them the nickname of sea cows, and in my opinion, they suit this name very well. On this herbivorous diet, they can reach a maximum size of around 13 feet, or 3.9 meters, and weigh up to 1,655 kilograms, or 3,650 pounds. This size makes them one of the largest mammals in North America, and they're also one of the most unique. They're thought to be around 6,500 manatees in the southeastern United States, but unfortunately, this number is decreasing. Because manatees spend most of their time in habitats with no natural predators, they lack proper predator avoidance behavior, as they often don't respond to loud noises or potential threats in their area, and are often injured by boats and their propellers. Manatees also fall victim to fishing gear. People don't hunt or try to fish for manatees, but they're often entangled in fishing line and in fishing nets. Environmental factors 
have also played a role in their decrease in numbers as cold weather, tropical storms and hurricanes known to be killers to manatees. In the past few years there has been a record number of manatee deaths. The main reason behind this is water pollution as the seagrasses that make up the majority of their diet are very sensitive to water pollution. Most of the manatees being found dead were very underweight and it's thought that they have starved because of the lack of seagrass. There are many ongoing conservation efforts to help these large mammals and if you live in Florida or you go there on your holidays it's important to always be mindful when boating. It's also important to minimize your interactions with manatees so they can go about their day without being stressed. These measures along with protecting their natural habitat will hopefully result in us having more manatees in the future. But for our next species we'll be heading to northwestern USA as we have the bull trout. Bull trout are normally found in cold clear waters and are often associated with mountain areas. The bull trout is only a trout by name as they're actually a species of char. In their clear cold water habitats they're mostly piscivorous but are also known to feed on crustaceans as well as large quantities of salmon eggs. On this diet they can reach pretty impressive sizes of around a meter or 40 inches. Because of their size and power they're very popular with fishermen. As this species is listed as vulnerable they are protected in some areas and it's best to release them back into the wild. But as they look similar to many other fish in their area such as the brook trout and the dolly varden many anglers confuse the species. Because of this potential mix up some authorities have come up with the slogan if you don't know be safe and let it go. This hopefully leads to more anglers looking out for this species and hopefully releasing them back into the wild. Some of the main reasons behind the bull trout's decline is the fact that they're so dependent on cold and pristine habitats. The construction of dams, roads and overall urbanization have vastly decreased their natural habitat and actually increased their overall water temperature and hopefully with more protection over their natural habitat we'll be able to see more bull trout in the future. But for our next species we'll be heading to the fresh waters of Virginia as we have the Roanoke log perch. The largest population of this species is found in Virginia but there is a slightly smaller population in North Carolina. They normally inhabit low shallow streams with warmer clear water. In these waters they are primarily insectivorous and have a very interesting feeding strategy as they use their strange conical snout to turn over small gravel and rocks to feed on exposed invertebrates. This helps them get prey that other fish are unable to and often means they are followed by larger fish trying to get an easy meal. This feeding strategy means that they are reliant on gravelly rocky substrates which means that there is a very limited area in which they can thrive. Today the Roanoke log perch is listed as vulnerable to extinction and again the main reasons for this are human related. One reason behind this is agricultural pollution as pesticides and insecticides find their way into rivers along with manure and waste from farm animals. Urbanization is another contributing factor as this results in silting of waterways turning their gravel streams into more muddy streams. Despite their peril in recent years things have started to look up for the Roanoke log perch as protection over their habitat has meant that some populations in the pig river are actually stable and in some areas are increasing and hopefully this trend continues and this very unique fish will grow in number. But that's about it for this video. I've only featured a handful of endangered species in the US so if you want to see a part two leave your suggestions down below. But thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time goodbye. Thank you.